Welcome to the Forte Web training video series. This video is going to focus on the Loads tab with a Beam example in mind and expand on all the different types of loads there are and different ways which you can input the loads. It's also going to briefly touch on the Tapered End Cuts tab. So let's spend a few moments talking about the example we're going to use in this video. We're going to look at Beam B6. It's a flush beam. That's over by the stairwell there. So if we look at that beam, and let's just assume our joist is 16 on center. So if we look at the tributary area for that beam, for the first 11 foot 1 and 3 quarter inches, from the inside face of bearing to the center of that uh, flush beam B5 that's hanging into one side, uh, that little area we have 8 inches of tributary. So that B6 is supporting 8 inches worth of floor load for that section. And then we have a point load from beam B5, and I've saved you the, the trouble of doing the math. We're going to use 140 pounds of live load and 42 pounds of dead load as that point load coming in from one side from B5. And then we have um, for the last bit of the flush beam, it's picking up the full 16 inches of floor load. So 8 inches from one side, 8 inches from the other. And if you're not familiar with uh, load distribution and this formula here where PLF equals your tributary width times your PSF uh, pounds per square foot regular floor load, you may want to check out our training that's available on Warehouser Learning or Google it or, or get familiar with this concept. All right, so I've saved you the trouble of putting in the spans and supports tab. Um, just one note on the member info tab. If you recall, we have this display multiple member connections as. You'll want to set that to full length for this video, or at least this example. So back on the loads tab, uh, we're given one load. So we have uniform PSF or PLF. Uh, so in the first video with Joyce, we spent a fair amount of time talking about point PLF and the difference between that and uh, point pounds. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference here between these two. So uniform PLF, if you choose this load, then you are doing the math where you take the tributary width for your joist and you multiply it by your floor load. So you're going to put in the pounds per lineal foot as your magnitude. If you choose uniform PSF, you'll see that you have the tributary width available to you. So we said the first section is 8 inches of tributary width. This is uh, the placement is how it's occurring on the member that you're sizing. So this is all coming from the floor decking. It's coming into the top of our uh, flush beam. So if we put in this load this way, oh, we got to make sure we only put it across the first 11 foot 1 and 3 quarter. And we'll see our graphic up top update accordingly. The equivalent of this input would be 8 inches, so 0.667 times 12 and times 40 respectively. So I'm just going to copy this load. So we get the distance is the same. So uniform PLF, you'll notice how my tributary width gets grayed out. So if I do 0.6667 times 12, that's 8, 26 point. So these are two different ways of inputting the same load. I'm just going to delete this one now. Let's go ahead and finish up this calc. So I'm going to go ahead and add my point load that's coming in from B5. That this is going to be in point pounds. It is coming in from the front side because it's a flush connection. And I said this was going to be 42 pounds of dead, 140. And we can say B5 point load. 
and you'll see the little arrow up top indicating that. Now I'm going to copy this load and we'll go ahead and put in the 16 inches worth on the last bit. So from, oh, you can also put in R for the right side if you don't want to type in 15, 1 and 3 quarter. And go 11, 1, 12. And this is going to be 16 inches worth of tributary for that area. So you want to make sure that you're um, putting in the right units to make sure you get the right loads because garbage in, garbage out. So if you accidentally choose PLF, but you don't multiply it by the tributary, you may be either overloading or underloading your flush beam. Um, lastly, I do want to touch on tapered loads. This probably applies more to roof members, but if you have a skewed beam and a floor, you may have a need to input a tapered load. And the PSF, PLF, uh, kind of the same philosophy there. If you choose PLF, you make sure that you do the math to multiply by the tributary. And you're given the location, just like with the uniform, but the difference is you're giving a starting and an ending tributary width. So if we said from 1 to 10, And we'll just put that uh, to 10 feet. And now you can see that in the graphic. So tapered, tapered loads work very much the same way. If you choose tapered PLF, then you have to multiply it by the tributary width and put in your magnitudes that way. So just be sure that you are picking the right units and putting in the correct magnitudes and placement as appropriate for designing your multiple member connections. Uh, lastly, we do have a tapered end cut that's available for flush beams, and it will be, it is only calculated for microlam, paralam, and timber strand type products. But you can put that in there, and, and Forte will figure out if it's adequate for the spans and loads that you've modeled. We do also have load linking available to you to use for all the member types in Forte Web, and that's going to be covered in another video. And that about covers it for the different types of loads that are available to you in Forte Web for use when sizing beams with more complicated loading scenarios.